some of the speeches delivered in this house. It seems that the amendment before the house has been treated by some speakers as having been inspired by a spirit of hostility. As I view it, however, its object is not to, to obstruct but to facilitate the work of this assembly. It is its purpose is to create an atmosphere which will enable us to realize rapidly and smoothly the great aim that we have set before ourselves. I think I shall not be far wrong in saying that there are men in every part of the house who sympathize with the amendment moved by Dr. Jacker. This very fact should suffice to convince every unprejudiced man that the object of the amendment is not to place unnecessary obstacles in our own way, but to pave the way to sure and certain success. I go further and say that if the newspaper reports are correct and uh, the House will meet again, uh, the next session of the Assembly will take place towards the end of January, it shows that the House feels that it ought to postpone the decision of important questions for a while on psychological grounds. The object of such a move can only be to make all those whose interests are affected by, the, uh, by any decisions that we may take, that they should have an opportunity of expressing their views before those decisions are taken. I congratulate all those who are responsible for this decision. It is wise on our part to make every section of the people in India and the people abroad realize that we do not want to impose our will on any party or community, but that such decisions as we may arrive at will be the result of joint discussion carried on with the sole object on bringing unwilling provinces into groups is morally completely unjustified. But as I said before, sir, we shall have time to consider the Constitution as it emerges from the labors of the section committees and the Union Constituent Assembly later on. For the time being, we are only concerned with the question whether the discussion of this resolution should be proceeded immediately and whether any harm would be done if the discussion is postponed. I have shown that no harm whatsoever would be done. We allow, we wait till the representatives of the Muslim League and the states are able to participate in the discussion of this important question. Even if we pass this resolution now, shall we morally be able to say no to the representatives of these sections? Should they ask us later on that questions to which the assembly might have given us assent by passing this resolution should be reconsidered? I am sure that should such a position arise, we shall not find it in our heart to say, to refuse the request I, of the Muslim League, representatives of the Muslim League, and the Indian states on this subject. Sir, one word more and I have this done. There are plenty of difficulties in our way, both in India and in India. There are still men like Lord Linlithgow who think that a British authority can be reasserted in India. They are suffering from a dangerous delusion. If they resort, if they accept such a, if they are allowed, if, if England allows itself to be guided by such men, it will be confronted with a far more serious position than any that it has been faced with during the last 25 years. The, it may for a while and only for a while be govern, able to govern India by force, to keep India down by force, but it will not be able to govern it even for a day. I am sure that the Labour government realizes this and has no intention of accepting the advice given to it by men like Mr. Churchill and Lord Lindenthal, or even by men like Lord Simon, who are conservatives in the guise of liberals. Sir, in view of the difficulties, both internal and external, I suggest that it will be wise on our part to act in such a way 
as to add to the moral authority of this assembly. We have plenty of friends, not merely in this country, but also in England. Let us proceed in such a way as to strengthen their hands. Our, let us not think of what we are entitled to do under the terms of the statement of May 16. Rather, let us think of what it is to our interest to do at this, uh, on this important occasion. We may, we may be completely justified in passing Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru's resolution, but of what use will it be for us to exercise our rights if it only adds to that discontent and unrest which it is our desire to allay? I hope, therefore, sir, that we shall act in such a way that India may, with the assent of all sections of the people, and if that unfortunately is not forthcoming, with the assent of all those who uh, accept the right of the country to move forward, be able to march rapidly towards the aim that we have set before itself, namely that of freedom and unity.